Well, we're going to begin with DTE pledging billions of dollars to upgrade the grid and keep the lights on. It was a very rough summer for DTE customers with storms wiping out power to hundreds of thousands of people for days on end. The outages caused flooding, financial damage and considerable heartbreak. And now the company is out with a $7 billion plan to try to keep it from happening further in the future. Business editor Rob Maloney live tonight with a look at exactly what DTE is planning to do to fix what have these have turned into such big issues for so many people, Rod. Well, Devin, and here's an example of why. This is what the company told us today. I'm going to break out my whiteboard here. What they're saying is up until this past summer, their, oper their operations center in downtown Detroit, when they would mark their map for where the outages were, they swore were magnetic buttons that they would move around on the board. And just now, they've computerized this operation. It's indicative of some of the other problems that they need to fix. High summer winds sent arcing and threatening power lines to the ground. Throughout Metro Detroit, hundreds of thousands of customers went without lights, refrigerators, or sump pumps for days. And the high winds of the past week caused more fiery down lines. The governor and angry customers alike demanded DTE do better, and apparently the company got the message. Today, DTE CEO Jerry Norsi announcing. We are committed to building what we call a near flawless grid over the long term, and I think you'll see many of those plans directed at upgrading, automating, and modernizing that equipment. DTE already announced its short-term plan of adding $70 million to the tree trimming budget, considering two-thirds of all outages are caused by trees in the branches. A lot of that spending, though, is hiring new tree trimmers and linemen and women, 500 between them. The long-term plan is to spend $7 billion over five years rebuilding and updating substations. Sharon Pfeffer is in charge of DTE's engineering and construction division. It's replacing wood cross arms with fiberglass, which have much greater strength, for example. We'll be rebuilding all of our substations, uh, at least the lower voltage ones, um, both to make them more reliable and have, have the newest technology, but also add that capacity that we need. They need that capacity for all of the electric vehicles that will be coming online here in the days ahead. The company also saying that they want to get on this as quickly as they can. Back to you. So, Rod, we get this question all the time. DTE hears it all the time, and that is why are the power lines above us? What about burying them? Well, mainly because it's an old system, Devin. Now, if you live in a new neighborhood, you'll notice that the new homes in the neighborhood don't have power lines above because when they build the new homes, they're putting those lines underground. Getting the transformation from the lines above underground is exceptionally expensive yeah. and could take a long time or perhaps even never to get mm. them down there. Yeah. All right, Rod.